Okay, um, this is a, a probability zero story from uh, 2017, I believe. It's called phenol theory. Um, has some scary science terms in there, so I brought pictures of the science equipment as we go over it. Um, okay, phenol theory. Um, what are you doing in the lab so late, Duncan? I swiveled my head around to see Gwen standing in the doorway. Uh, just working on my dissertation research. I shifted my body to hide the vial on the workbench from her view. She grinned and walked over to me. Doesn't look like a polyamine synthesis. That's a polyamine. <laughs> In case you care. <laughs> um, I, I tried to slide the vial from the view nonchalantly. Yeah, uh, it's a side project. Ooh, nice crystals. Sparkly. You, crystal you recrystallize it yourself? Busted. I held up the vial, letting her look at the iridescent powder inside. Promise you won't tell anyone about this? She took the vial from my hand, intrigued. It flows, almost like a liquid. She turned the vial from side to side, staring at the sparkling dust as it flowed back and forth. What is it? Promise you'll keep your mouth shut? You know me, Duncan. My lips are sealed. It's fairy dust. She gave me a hurt look. You don't want to tell me, just say so. She opened the vial and peered inside. No, I'm serious. Careful. And where would you get fairy dust? The stockroom have a mythical substances shelf I don't know about? A um, troll told me about it. Um, she burst into laughter. Her hands shook just a bit, but enough to slosh some of the dust onto her thumb and forefinger. I suppose it lived under a wheatstone bridge in the physics lab? There's a wheatstone bridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, you better wash that off. I pointed to the shimmering powder smeared on her hand. Oh, it's tingly, all up my arm. What is this stuff? I told you. Damn it, Duncan, chemical exposure is serious. Oh, she wobbled like she was dizzy and about to fall over then lifted off her feet and floated gently toward the ceiling. I stepped back to avoid her, thla her thrashing legs. She screeched like a banshee who overshot her titration in point. Quiet, someone will hear you. To her credit, she stopped screaming and thrashing. Fine, how do I get back to the ground? She bobbed gently against the ceiling, arms folded like an angry parade balloon. I have no idea, and we just started analyzing what it's made of. She glared heat at me. Well, what's it made of? Near as I can tell, it's a low-density nanoparticle of some sort. I'd love to get some time on the electron microscope, but heh, try getting that past the uh, try getting that proposal past the department chair. <laughs> exactly. It has very low solubility in water, so I imagine the bonding is nonpolar. Not helping. But the sparkling seems to indicate banding of electron states, like metallic bonds. Not helping. What do you what do you want me to do? I don't know, run a sample through the GCMS maybe. That's a big scary GCMS. <laughs> um, if we can find out what it's made of, good idea. I took the vial from her carefully and injected a few microliters into the GCMS. While I waited for its results, I prepared a new Joel ball to run through the IR. And that's an infrared. IR spectrum. Um, uh, hey, Gwen, looks like the GCMS is ready. Can you reach down far enough to check the results? I'm going to run an IR spec. She glared at me, but pushed herself along the ceiling to push it over the GCMS readout. Weird, it's picking up quite a few phenyl uh, phenylamine compounds, including dimers and trimers. But there are several unidentified components. There's the output she saw. <laughs> Those are federal mean peaks, by the way. Um, IR agrees, I said. A lot of amine and phenol peaks. Fingerprint region looks really strange, though. Fingerprint, fingerprint regions that squeakly part on the left. You're the polyamine expert. How does that make me float? It doesn't. She looked at her levitating body pointedly. Well, it shouldn't. Uh, phenol, polyphenol means tend to be good antimicrobial agents, for whatever good that does. Regardless, the molecules are too big to be absorbed through your skin. But what about the smaller units, like the dimers? Well, yeah, they could diffuse into your bloodstream, especially when dispersed in nanoparticles. What do they do there? They're good at promoting cell growth. They enhance activity of some neurotransmitter receptors. Some of them go through the blood-brain barrier. Wait, they can, go, they can go through my bloodstream, get in my brain, mess with my neuroreceptors? Her eyes went wide. I fidgeted with the vial. I don't see how that would make you float, maybe make you believe you can float, but 
That's not very helpful, Duncan. No, wait, I think that's it. She looked at me like I had just told her I like the smell of an anhydrin. You're saying I'm floating because I think I'm floating? Why not? There are quite a few unknown compounds in the dust. Some can be highly psychotropic, and the polyamines can make you susceptible to their effects. So all I have to do is stop believing I can float. Uh, no, not that easy. You've seen yourself float. How are you gonna not believe it? What then? It just has to run its course. Shouldn't take more than a couple hours to pass through your body. She sighed. I don't know, it doesn't seem very scientific. Of course it is. We've made empirical observations, drawn conclusions, formulated hypotheses. <laughs> I can't get much more scientific. You know what I mean. Science is all about discovering new phenomena. Okay, fine, just tell me you're done playing with new phenomena. I glanced sheepishly at the witch's brew on my stopper here or my blast on my blood bench. Well... <laughs> <laughs>